Ladies and gentlemen, live from the World Congress Center, Atlanta, welcome to Miss World 1991. and Gina Tolleson. Hello and welcome to Miss World 1991, coming to you from the World Congress Center here in Atlanta. Now, 79 beautiful girls have come to the Peach State of Georgia to compete for the most coveted award in international beauty, the Miss World Crown, and a magical year ahead. And somebody who knows just how magical that can be is my partner here on stage, who, of course, is also the current Miss World. Gina, what's it been like? I've had a tremendous year. It's truly been a very memorable experience for me. Gina, coming up, a personal question straight away. Isn't it terrible to get personal? Do you believe in dreams coming true? Well, I believe in Santa Claus, Peter, so I believe anything can happen, really. Well, that's close enough, because we're going to take you back in time to the crowning of Miss World last year and the interviews. Do you remember this scene? Gina, you want to go into broadcasting? Yes, I hope to have your job one day, Peter. Oh, thank you. Well, do, the audition, <laughs> do the audition while you're here. That's what I say. So, here you are presenting, and dreams really do come true, don't they? They must do. You, more than anyone else, Gina, also knows there's a serious side to the contest. Yes, the Miss World theme is Beauty with a Purpose, and this year the contest focused on Operation Hunger, which we will hear much more about later in the program. Well, I can tell you tonight's show is truly international. Apart from our beautiful girls, we're going to whisk you off for a whistle-stop tour of South Africa. And from Australia and New Zealand, our top cabaret is guaranteed to make all the hearts a flutter. And the destiny of the Miss World Crown will be decided by a judging panel here in Atlanta and by another panel by live link-up in South Africa. And Peter keeps complaining that he hasn't seen the real Atlanta. So as a resident, I will be taking him on a personal tour of the city. I look forward to that, Gina. But first of all, let us meet the 1991 Miss World contestants in national costume and in evening wear. We start with Miss American Virgin Islands. Hi, I'm Cheryl Liba Milligan coming to you from the island of St. Croix. I'm a full-time student and a retail store manager. Hello, I'm Joanne Bird. I'm a 20-year-old internal data entry clerk, and I'm from St. John's. Hola, my name is Marcela Chazarreta. I study economy in Buenos Aires. Come by, I'm Sandra Cruz. I'm 23 years old, graduated medical assistant from Santa Cruz. Hello, I'm Leanne Buckle. I'm a 21-year-old, final year Bachelor of Commerce student and model from Queensland. 
Grüß Gott, mein Name ist Andrea Pfeiffer. I'm a 18 years old dental nurse from Styria. Hi, I'm Tanya Newton. I work at City Trust. I'm 19 years of age and I'm from the beautiful island of New Providence. Goedenavond, bonsoir. I am Anke van der Meersch. I'm 19 years old and I'm a fashion model which I tried to combine with my law studies. Hello, I'm 21-year-old Josephine Galt. I live in Belize City and I'm a banker. Hola, my name is Monica Gamarra. I'm 20 years old. I'm studying business administration in Cochabamba. Oi, my name is Katja Kupczynski. I'm 20 years old, student from San Leopoldo. Hello, my name is Marjorie Penn. I'm 18 years old, presently working at a real estate company, and I'm from the British Virgin Islands. Zdravite, <laughs> my name is Lubomira Slavtova. I'm 17 years old. I'm a student from Sofia. Hello, I'm 19-year-old Yvette Jordison of Grand Cayman, and I'm a junior at the International College of the Cayman Islands. Hola, my name is Carolina Michelson. I'm a 23-year-old child psychologist, and I live in my beautiful Santiago. Hello, my name is Lin Lanzhi. I'm 23 years old. I'm a student from Taipei. Hello, my name is Adriana Rodriguez. I live in Bogota. I have written a book of poetry. Hello, my name is Jenny Jimenez. I am 20 years old and I'm a student. Bentabai, I'm Nashaita Desbarida, 23 years old and I'm a model actress. Yes, us. My name is Anna Stefano and I live in Nicosia. I'm 18 years of age and currently studying hotel management. Ahoy, my name is Andrea Tatarkova. I am 20 years old and uh, I am student in the high school from Kosciutta. Hi sir, my name is Soran Kiusko and I'm 17 years old. My future ambition is to become a doctor. Hola, my name is Rosana Rodriguez. I'm 21 years old and I'm a news presenter in Santo Domingo. Hola, I'm Sonia Herano, an 18-year-old TV producer assistant and I come from Guayaquil. Hola, my name is Lucia Lopez. I am 22 years old. I am a student nutrition in San Salvador. My name is Nina Audio. I'm a 20 years old student and I come from Tampere. Bonsoir. My name is Mariva George. I'm 22 years old student. Come from French Polynesia. Hello, my name is Susanne Petri. I'm 18 years old. I'm a student and I come from Saarbrücken. Barkan Kujama. I am Jamila Haruna, a graduate of University of Arkansas, Lorak. Hello, my name is Solna Lagosta and I'm a 17-year-old student. Yasas, I'm Miriam Panagos, 20 years old, professional model from Athens. Hi, my name is Bibi Hong, I'm an 18-year-old student and I'm coming from Gautu. Hi, I'm Yvonne Spate, I'm a 20-year-old student and I'm from Athens. Hola, my name is Marlin Magaña, I am 21 years old. I study public relations in Guatemala City. Hello, my name is Linda Egging. I'm 21 years old. I'm enjoying a career in the performing arts. I'm from Strampoy. Hola, my name is Arlene Raucher. I study computer science in Tegucigalpa. Hello, my name is Osha Michna. I'm 19 years old. I work as model in Budapest. Hello, my name is Svava Haraldsdóttir and I'm a 19-year-old student from Reykjavik. Namaste, I'm Ritu Singh from New Delhi. I'm 20 years old and a student of fashion designing, political science and economics. Hello, my name is Amanda Brunker. I'm an 18-year-old fashion model and I live in Dublin. Shalom, my name is Lia Bitkowski. I live in Mushav Nordia and I'm a soldier in the IDF. Ciao, I'm Sabina Pellati, I'm an art student, I'm 19 years old and I live in Reggio Emilia. Hello everyone, I'm Sandra Foster, I'm a 21 year old student from Kingston. Konbanwa, my name is Junko Tsuda, I'm 21 years old. I live in Tokyo, I'm a secretary. Habari, my name is Nkirote Karimi Bijere. I'm a 21-year-old student of International Business Administration, and I come from Meru. Hello, 
My name is Kim Tae-wa. I am 20 years old. I live in Busan and I am a student. Sveiki. My name is Ines Schlesser and I am 19 years old, student from Riga. Mahaba. My name is Diana Bekdash. I am 20 year old student from Beirut. Hola, my name is Christina Lam. I'm 20 years old and I come from Macau. I'm working in the Macau Government Tourist Office. Selamat datang. My name is Samantha Schubert and I'm a 22-year-old professional dancer and a full-time fashion model. And I come from the beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur. Merhaba. My name is Romina Januiz. I am 18 years old. I am employed as secretary in the civil service and I come from Xira. Hello, I'm Geraldine Deville. I'm 18 years of age. I am an art student and I come from Central Flag. Hola, my name is Cristina Urrutia. I'm 19 years old. I'm a student in Mexico City. Hi there, I'm Michelle McLean. I'm 19 years of age and a part-time student of massage and reflexology. I come from the sunshine capital, Vintuk. Hi there, I'm Lisa de Montour. I'm 21 years of age and I'm a receptionist and part-time model from Taupo. Ekrole. My name is Adeni Kyoshinoa and I live in Lagos. I just graduated from Essex University where I studied politics. Hi, I'm Alan Bristrevik and I'm 18 years old. I come from a small town called Mulda and I study economy and accounting. Hola, my name is Malena Berancourt. I'm 19 years old. I'm a student in Panama City. Hola, my name is Vivian Benitez. I am 21 years old. I study law in Asuncion. Hello there. My name is Jimmy Champaro, 20 years of age, from Manila. I'm taking a BS Math major in Computer Science. Hello, my name is Karina Wojciechowska. I am 19 years old, from Katowice, and I am secretary. Hola, I'm Maria do Carmo. I'm 20 years old. I'm a student and a photograph model from Lisbon. Hola, my name is Joana Berenice Rizarri. I'm a 20 years old pre-medical science student and I live in Lajas. Hello, my name is Gabriela Dragomirescu. I am 20 years old and I am a model in Bucharest. Hi, I'm Jay Sheen and I'm an 18 year old mass communication student from Singapore. Hi, I'm Diana Tolton Davis. I'm 22 years old. I'm an actress and model and I live in Johannesburg. Hola, my name is Katia Moreno. I'm 20 years old. I'm an economic student and I'm from Tenerife. Hi, I'm Jackie Bennett from Manzini. I'm 20 years old and I'm a secretary. Hey, my name is Kathleen Olson and I'm from Kunstbacke. I'm 23 years old and I work as a singer. Hello, I'm Sandra Akete from Aiken. I'm 22 years old and I work as a model. Swedika, my name is Levedi Malaysi. I'm 21 years old. I'm student in public relations. I live in Bangkok. Hello, I am Sas Tibetan. I'm 21 years old. I'm a secretary and fashion model. I'm from Port of Spain, Trinidad. Marhaba. My name is Aslahan Kurya. I'm a 19-year-old biology student from Istanbul, and I want to specialize in genetics. Hi there. I'm Joanne Lewis. I'm 21 years old and a model from Nottingham. Hello, my name is Andrea Gorrochategui. I'm from Montevideo. I'm 23 years old and I'm nearly qualified as an accountant. Hello and happy holidays. My name is Charlotte Ray. I'm 25 years old and I'm pursuing a career in children's television programming. Hola, my name is Nini Leal. I come from Maracaibo. I am 20 years old and I study engineering. Bravo. My name is Tripuna Slavica. I come from Vukovar. I'm studying medicine and I'm 20 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, the Miss World 1991 contestants. In a moment, we will fly to South Africa. We'll be right back.
Thank you, and uh, welcome back to Miss World 1991. Now, straight away, let's meet the people who have the most difficult task in the world tonight, our panel of judges. And we're going to start right here with our panel in Atlanta, beginning with judge number one. He is Mike Feifrick, fitness trainer here for the Atlanta Falcons. And next, our judge number two is Miss Brenda McLean, a former TV news anchor. Next, we have judge number three, Phil Hayes. He is the executive director of the Miss North and South Carolina beauty pageants. Our fourth judge is Miss Marie DeGeorge. She is an internationally recognized couturier. And our fifth judge is the non-voting chairman of the panel, Mr. Eric Morley. Our sixth judge this evening is Mr. Jarvis Astaire. He is the international president of Variety Clubs International. Our seventh judge is Mr. Paul Block. He is the president of Revlon Professional Products. Our eighth judge is Miss Jane Ambrose. She is the managing director of her own and one of Australia's top public relations firms. And our final judge is judge number nine, Mr. Edgar Botero, president of Connick International Construction. And of course, we alter the marks of our South African panel. They'll be phoning in their computer marks live later in the program from South Africa. But Peter, now it's time for you to go to work as we go to South Africa and the sunny locations of Plettenberg, Drakensberg, Durban, Cape Town, and the Eastern Transvaal as we see the girls now in their swimwear. This is Miss American Virgin Islands, Cheryl Lieber Milligan. Cheryl's ambition is to complete her nursing degree. Here's Miss Antigua and Barbuda, Joanne Bird. She's employed in an investment bank. Miss Argentina is Marcela Chazaretta. She's a student studying business management. This is Miss Aruba, Sandra Cruz. Sandra is a qualified medical assistant. Here's Miss Australia, Leanne Buckle. Leanne is completing a Bachelor of Commerce degree. Miss Austria now, Andrea Isabella Pfeiffer, and she's a dental assistant. This is Miss Bahamas, Tania Stewart-Newton. She is currently employed as a finance officer. And this is Miss Belgium, Anka van der Mersch. Anka is a student of economics. Let's say hello to Miss Belize, Josephine Galt. She is currently employed in a bank. And this is Miss Bolivia, Monica Gamera Gize. She's studying business administration at university. Miss Brazil is Katya Kupsinski. She's currently a student of psychology. And this is Miss British Virgin Islands, Marjorie Penn. She's an administrative assistant. This is Miss Bulgaria, Lubmira Slavcheva. Lubmira is currently a high school student. This is Miss Canada, Tara Pat. She's recently completed a hospitality and tourism course. Miss Cayman Islands is Yvette Jordison, and she works in the family business while she completes her business degree. This is Miss Chile, Carolina Michelson. She's studying psychology. This is Miss Republic of China, Lan Chi Lin, and she's studying Chinese at university. Here's Miss Colombia, Adriana Rodriguez, who's written a book and is a publicity student. This is Miss Costa Rica, Jeannie Kimenez, and she's a third year advertising student at university. This is Miss Curacao, Nashara Desbarida, and she wants to be in the movies. Here's Miss Cyprus and Stefanou. Anna's completing a degree in hotel management. 
Miss Czechoslovakia is Andrea Tartakova, and she's a student teacher at university. Miss Denmark is Sharon Gifskoff, and she'd like to become a doctor. Miss Dominican Republic, Rosanna Rodriguez. She's a student studying publicity and business. Miss Ecuador, Swani Bejarano, and she is a TV producer's assistant. Miss El Salvador, Lucia Lopez, is in the third year of a degree on nutrition. Miss Finland, Nina Altillo. She's studying biology and ecology. Miss France, Mareva Georges. She's a student at the University of Economy. And Miss Germany, Suzanne Petri. She's currently employed as a student and wants to go into modeling. Miss Ghana, Yamila Haruna Danzuru. She's currently a midwife. And Miss Gibraltar, Ornella Costa. She's studying Spanish and biology. Here's Miss Greece, Miriam Panagos. She'd like to travel all the way through Europe and Asia. Miss Greenland is BB Home. She's a student and her ambition is to become a lawyer. Miss Guam, Yvonne Limpiacho Spate. She's completing a master's degree in accounting. And Miss Guatemala, Marlon Magania. Marlon is employed as a secretary and as a TV announcer. And here's Miss Holland, Linda Egging. Linda's ambition is to work in television. Miss Honduras, Arlene Rauscher. Arlene is currently completing a course in information management. Miss Hungary, Oshoya Mishna. She's majoring in drawing and arts. And this is Miss Iceland, Svava Harald's daughter. She's currently attending college and wants to study architecture. This is Miss India, Ritu Singh, and she's studying economics and political science. Miss Ireland is Amanda Brunka. Amanda wants to get into television presentation. And here's Miss Israel, Liat Ditkovsky, who's currently doing national service. Miss Italy, Sabina Pellati, a student and in the future wants to be a graphic artist. Miss Jamaica, Sandra Foster, is at present studying graphic design. And Miss Japan, Junko Tesura, she's currently working as an office clerk. Miss Kenya, Kerote Umbejawe, she's a student of International Business Administration. This is Miss Korea, Kim Tae Hwa. She's a student of film. This is Miss Latvia, Inishe Schleschere, and she is currently graduating from Trade College. Miss Lebanon, Diana Begdash. She's a student of sociology. This is Miss Macau, Christina Lam. Christina's ambition is to take a hotel management course. And Miss Malaysia, Samantha Schubert, her ambition is to set up a school of performing arts. Miss Malta, Romina Genuis. Romina is a secretary for the civil service. Miss Mauritius, Geraldine Deville, she hopes to become a successful fashion designer. This is Miss Mexico, Cristina Uruta, and her ambition is to act and sing professionally. Miss Namibia, Michelle McLean, enjoys social work and has special training in drama and acting. Miss New Zealand, Lisa Mare de Pontoc. She would like to get into television. Miss Nigeria, Adaniki Oshinowo. She has recently graduated from university, having studied politics. And here's Miss Norway, Anne Britt Rovic, in the final year of college where she's studying accounting. This is Miss Panama, Malena Betancourt. She's doing voluntary work at a children's hospital. And Miss Paraguay, Vivian Benitez. Vivian is employed as a bank clerk. Miss Philippines, Jemith 
Gamparo. Jamith is a student studying maths and computers. This is Miss Poland, Karina Wojciechowska. She works as a secretary. This is Miss Portugal, Maria do Carmo Ramalho, and she wants to do a course in fashion design. Miss Puerto Rico is Joanna Irizarry, and she is doing a bachelor degree in pharmacy. Miss Romania, Gabriela Dragomirescu. Her ambition is to specialize in banking and finance. Miss Singapore, Jay Jayakode. She would like to further her studies with a degree in advertising. Miss South Africa, Diana Tilden Davis, is a hopeful young actress. Miss Spain, Akachi Moreno Navarro. She would like to study economics in the future. And Miss Swaziland, Jackie Bennett, is a secretary and is completing a computer course. Miss Sweden is Catherine Olsen. She studied economics at college and is an artist. Miss Switzerland, Sandra Egerter, is employed as a model. Miss Thailand, Rawadi Malaysi, works and studies in public relations. Miss Trinidad and Tobago, Sasti Bechan. Sasti's ambition is to run her own international company. Miss Turkey, Ezlhan Korean, is currently studying biology at the university. Miss United Kingdom, Joanne Lewis, would like to make a career in broadcasting. And Miss Uruguay, Andrea Gorochategui, is currently a student of accounting. Here's Miss USA, Charlotte Ray. Charlotte is currently studying education. And Miss Venezuela, Ninibet Leal, is currently a student of industrial engineering. And finally, Miss Yugoslavia, Slavica Tripanovic, is a student of medicine. Ah, yes, there they are, the 1991 Miss World contestants, and don't they look stunning? Absolutely delightful. You're not going to... Yes, thank you. Yes. I'd like to take them all home too, but my wife won't let me. Okay, this is where we get serious. Believe it or not, this is the last time you're going to see all the girls together, because the judges by the computers have had to select our final ten and the marks that you saw on your screens were the combined computer totals to date. It was a tough decision. Before we get to that, please, one more time, the girls have been great. We've had a lot of fun in Atlanta. Let's hear it for the Miss World contestants. Thank you. Okay, now the moment of truth. I've got a little list. There are ten names on this list. The first semi-finalist going through to Miss World 1991 is Miss France. Our next semi-finalist is Miss Turkey. Semi-finalist number three is Miss Jamaica. Fourth semi-finalist, Miss USA. And fifth semi-final place goes to Miss Australia.
It's the halfway stage, five places left. The next semi-finalist, Miss India. Here she comes, our seventh semi-finalist is Miss Venezuela. Three places to be filled. The next one goes to Miss Namibia. The penultimate semi-final place, Miss South Africa. Just one more place, and that goes to Miss New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, the 10 Miss World semi-finalists. Let's hear it for them. We're going to take a break. Join us in a moment for our African experience. We'll be right back. back to Miss World. You know, Gina, there's one place that I really would like to visit. That's South Africa, but you've been there. Yes, I was very fortunate enough to visit there earlier this summer. And of course, the girls just came back from a wonderful trip, so maybe, Peter, you can sample that through their eyes. Beauty with a Purpose is the slogan of the Miss World contest, and it's helped to raise many millions of dollars for handicapped and deprived children worldwide. Of course, this has been done in association with Variety Clubs International, which is the world's greatest children's charity. But someone who can tell you much more about that is Miss Julia Morley. Welcome to South Africa. As contestants from 78 nations made history by being the first to visit South Africa since the embargo on such visits was lifted. Their purpose? To raise funds to assist the work of Operation Hunger, the self-help feeding program for children. They arrive in Johannesburg to a warm welcome. concept of beauty with a purpose they'll raise lots and lots of money for us because sadly December is always our time of greatest need After that colourful welcome, we started work on the fundraising. The first event organised for us was participation in an African fashion extravaganza. Here you see the girls rehearsing. African fashion may not be as familiar to many viewers as the creations from London, Paris, Milan and New York, but in the climate of South Africa, these designs are their equal. We had sent the girls' measurements ahead, so with a little adjustment here and there, we soon fitted into their clothes. Whilst in South Africa, we thought it a good idea to invite a panel of judges from the area to take part in the selecting of the final ten, so that we would have two contrasting cultures giving their opinion, one in Johannesburg and one in Atlanta. 
Here you see the arrow companion assessing the contestant's poise and personality. Later, they individually interviewed every contestant. Children love to join in the activities of adults and African children are no exception. A few days after the fashion show, we attended our second fundraising event which was a charity dinner. Each contestant brings with her gifts from her country which are auctioned or raffled in the aid of charities. Here are some of the auction items. Here the contestants wear their colourful national costumes. Ina Perlman, director of Operation Hunger, explains its purpose. Eric Morley, chairman of the Miss World, conducts the auction. Bids are brisk and many thousands of dollars are raised. The girls move to the stage and end the dinner by joining PJ Paz in a song which has become the signature tune during our South African visit. After Johannesburg, the contestants were split into a number of groups, each to visit a different Operation Hunger location. Here we join them at Plettenberg Bay. Again a warm welcome. The girls helped feed the children before driving through spectacular scenery to the first Operation Hunger location. Here they pause for a moment's relaxation in the company of the local sea rescue team who take them for a spin in what they affectionately called their rubber ducks. From Plettenberg Bay, the cameras switch to join the group in Durban. Some of the girls were overcome with emotion when they saw the children. One of the great features of Operation Hunger is that they do not just buy food to make the children dependent on the future supplies, they teach them to make goods that can be sold to ensure ongoing food supplies. Self-sufficiency is the target. For animal lovers, Eastern Transvaal was the height of the entire visit. Here the girls were able to see animals in their natural habitat, free to roam as nature intended. Ina Palman once again met the girls and gave them a tour of yet another Operation Hunger location. Such locations are situated throughout Africa, bringing hope and a future to thousands of African children. All the contestants were proud to be associated with such a project. Miss Cypress shows she's quite experienced at milking a goat. Miss Puerto Rico just loved drinking the milk, whilst other girls planted a tree for the future. None of the girls have ever experienced scenes like this before. They will become cherished memories. To most of you watching this program, this is a simple pump, similar to that last used by your forebears. To obtain water today, you simply turn on a tap. 
Up until a few months ago, this Operation Hunger location had to carry its water from an adjacent river full of bacteria. Thousands of children died of killer diseases. Through a generous donor, funds were obtained to bore a well deep down under the pump you've just seen. The killer diseases disappeared almost overnight. From the Eastern Transvaal, our journey took us on to Drakensberg, where the contestants were able to participate in such activities as horse riding and beautiful surroundings. received a Cape Carnival welcome. Once again, the girls are seen helping feed the children. As the evening drew to a close, the girls joined the children around the campfire, where PJ Powers, the country's leading singer of African songs, ended their tour of South Africa with a song, which expressed more than words the feelings of the entire party.
Delta, welcome back to the Miss World 1991, where we're about to meet our semifinalist on a more personal basis. I can tell you from personal experience that it can be a true test of your concentration as well as personality as you tour around to many countries. So let's now learn something a bit more about these young women as they chat to Peter. Yes, thanks, Jean. And of course, we're starting with Miss France, who's Mareva Georges. Mareva, tu parles beaucoup de langues, oui? Good night, everybody. Yes, I speak English and Spanish because our island is a touristic island. I'm from Tahiti, and we have to speak a lot of language because we have a lot of tourism. Right, well, I've just exhausted all my French, so we'll stick to English, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> You're a student. Yes, I'm on third degrees of university. I have three more years to finish, and after I would like to work in tourism or maybe commercial career. Right, now, now just tell me, Mareva, you're Miss France, but you're from Tahiti. Yes, because Tahiti is a French colony. And how did you become Miss France then? Where did you I was, I was elected Miss Tahiti before, and last year I went for my studies in France in September, and I was elected Miss France last December. Right, obviously a bright girl who gets around. Now let me ask you a really important question for everyone here in Atlanta. We all know that French men are supposed to be very romantic. Yes, but what they about are. Georgia gentlemen? Oh, I think they are nice too. <laughs> I think you said the right thing there. <laughs> Mareva, Mareva, the trip to South Africa looked absolutely fabulous. Which part of it did you enjoy? Uh, I remember when we went to, the, to see the children, the miserable children, we can say that we, have, we are privileged people, and, but we must think about them because we must stay humble and try to help them because injustice in this world is so big. We have, right. we have to, to... We've got to do everything we can to help, we haven't have we? We have to, to I'd know say the, the true values of humans. I agree with you entirely. I'm sure everyone in this hall does. Thank you, Ms. France. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on now to Ms. Turkey. Aslahan, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Aslan, you're a student as well. What are you studying? Genetics and biology. Genetics and biology. I was yes. never any good at that. Why are you studying that? Genetics is a very new area. We're searching for the answers of cancer and AIDS. Or don't you want to be forever young? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Turkey, tell us a little bit about Turkey. In fact, do one better. Tell me a little bit about young Turkish women. What are they like? What sort of things do they enjoy? Um, Turkish women are very modern industrious and ambitious. We have Turkish women in the parliament. We can find them working in every area as a doctor, lawyer, in every area. So they really are modern young women who are looking to yes. a bright future, yes? Yes. Now, you're also a sporting lady, I know. <laughs> yes. You're a good rower, aren't you? You enjoy rowing. Not actually. I'm a coxman. So you, you sit down the back of the boat telling the other people how to row. Yes, it's nice to be on the sea. <laughs> it's very, very comfortable and very lazy, isn't it? I can tell you as well that Aslahan is extremely talented musically. You're a good musician. I've heard you play. Yeah. What's your favorite instrument? Piano. I play piano for And you years. play piano extremely well indeed. Aslahan, thank you very much indeed. Miss yeah. Turkey, thank you. A lot of students here tonight. Miss Jamaica, Sandra Foster is one as well. What are you studying, Sandra? I'm studying graphic design at a school of art in Kingston. Right, and what sort of work will, will that lead you into? Well, I'm hoping to go into either advertising or marketing. Advertising or marketing. Hey, I've got a terrible test for you. I've never been to Jamaica either, so come on, you've got the floor. Let's have a commercial for Jamaica. Tell me all about it. Sure. Well, I must admit, I'm a bit biased as far as I'm concerned. Jamaica is one of the most beautiful places in the world. We have so many things for people. There's so many things to do. You can hike up to the Blue Mountain Peak. You can go to our reggae festival. We have a very rich culture, wonderful food, and warm and friendly people. You know what, Sandra? I just gave you quite a commercial spot there. Do I get a free holiday in Jamaica? Sure, anytime, anytime. I'm not silly. I knew what I was doing. How do you relax, Sandra? Pardon me? How do you, how do you relax? What do you do to relax? How do I relax? Well, sometimes listening to music, 
talking to good friends. Sometimes you meditate, just sit by yourself quietly, take a deep breath and think about things. You can dance at the ball later. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Maker. Thank you. We move on to a lady who's not very far from home, Miss USA, Charlotte Ray. How are you, Charlotte? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Studying what, Charlotte? Another I'm, student. I'm studying education and communications at Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's an interesting combination. Why, why both of them? Why not just say education? Are you, are you planning to be a teacher? Yes, I am planning to be a teacher, but I would also like to work in children's television programming. I think we need more educational, creative television programming for children all over the world. Well, my favorite program is Sesame Street. I'm always learning from it. <laughs> Sandra, just to get serious I'm for a, just to get serious for a minute. In England, where 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 I live, there's a big debate at the moment that they want to bring back very traditional standards of education and really teach the kids how to read and write and do their sums. Are you a traditionalist or a, or a progressive? I'm definitely progressive as far as education is concerned. I think that we need to move more into education as far as multicultural education is concerned. Children need to learn more about each other's cultures at a younger age instead of in a pageant experience like this where we're all much older. And I also think we should bring health issues more into education, um, issues such as AIDS and, and other sexually transmitted diseases. Absolutely. Start teaching people young how to be adults, yes? That's correct. Gosh, if I had a teacher like you, I'd have done much better at school. Thank you, Miss USA. Thank you. I hate to say it, but I think I'm the least educated person here. Miss Australia, Leanne Buckle, you too are a student, yes? That's correct, Peter. What are you doing? I'm studying a Bachelor of Commerce degree at Queensland University. And I would have that totally under my belt if it weren't for being uh, nominated as the face of Australia at the end of my second year of my studies. So basically, I did promoting of Australia to Japan in 1990, it was. Well, that must have been a good experience. Oh, it was a fabulous experience, Peter. I so enjoyed it. Are you going to go back and take up your studies again? This is definitely on my plans. I definitely want to finish a degree that I started. And when I do finish it, I don't think I will pursue the actual accounting side of it. I'll probably go into something more along the lines of public relations. There was a lady who just stopped me before these interviews, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who she is later. And she said, please ask Leanne, is Australia full of crocodile dundees? Oh my goodness, no. Um, there's a couple of them, they're not typical. Australians are just like you and me, basically. I don't of think she's going me. now. I think she was only going for crocodile dundee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get involved in charity work, Leanne, don't you? Yes, I do, Peter. I've worked with the Visually Impaired Vocational Unit for Children in Australia. And I also have done work with the Royal Children's Hospital in Queensland doing charity fashion parades. See, I've been modelling for the past four years now. That's another reason why I'd like to go into public relations work, because I've been involved with lots of interesting people who are doing PR. And every job that I've done modelling is like I meeting think, a new person. I think it's you'll get a, get a job offer on the strength of that alone. Thank you, our first five semi-finalists. Thank you. pressure off the girls for a moment and see them having some real fun. Here's the Miss World contestant showing you that every girl loves to dance.
good, eh? I enjoyed that. Thank heavens they didn't ask me to dance. I'd have shown them all up. Now, five more girls to chat to. We're going to start right away with Miss India. Ritu Singh. Ritu, welcome. Thank you. Ritu, who's a very successful businesswoman already, aren't you? Not really fully yet. What sort of business are you in? Because I know you are in business. Uh, yes, Peter, I am into silk business. I have my own firm, uh, although it came into existence very recently. Uh, but I'm dealing in silk as I've just finished my fashion designing along with my economics and political science. Uh, I had a friend in Switzerland who wanted Indian silk, and uh, that's how I got my first order, and I landed up having a silk firm of my own. Well, that's a good way to uh, pursue your education, make some money at the same time. Tell me, do, do you think that Western fashion, Ritu, has a lot to learn from Eastern fashion? Uh, it's very different. I think there's nothing very common in the Western and the Eastern fashion. So I think a lot of things can be picked up from the West uh, by the East and the East for the, by the West. Now, do you want to continue doing that in the future? Is that going to be your line of work? Yes, I think I really want to continue in fashion designing. What other things do young ladies get up to musically, shall we say, in, in, uh, in India? Do they like rock and roll? Uh, yes, I'm very fond of dancing and music and uh, painting and dramatics, as a matter of fact. Now, I know you do some special dancing, don't you? What's it called? Uh, yes, it's called Kathak. It's Indian classical. That's like, is that, is that like Indian Bali? Indian classical again. And you, and you wear very ornate headdresses and jewelry for things like that? Uh, pardon me? You wear special jewelry and you... Yes, we have special jewelry. We have a special costume for the dance. I'm only asking that because I'm already admiring your earrings. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Ritu. Miss India, thank you. And now we come to Miss Venezuela, but you know what? I'm lost for words where she's concerned, which is why I've got Nadia here beside me. Nadia, hello. Good evening, Peter. You're going to enjoy this, aren't you? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. Nadia, would you like to ask Miss uh, Venezuela, uh, Nini Bet, what she's studying and why? Nini Bet, ¿qué estás estudiando y por qué? Estoy estudiando actualmente ingeniería industrial. La estudio porque considero que es una carrera que anteriormente se veía que no era para las mujeres, pero las mujeres hoy en día han demostrado ser mujeres muy activas, modernas, muy dinámicas y han demostrado tener la capacidad para desarrollar ese trabajo y cualquier otro. Well, she's studying industrial engineering at the moment. She's studying it because in the past she does realize that it was never really an occupation that women went into, but she thinks that these days women are modern, they're dynamic and they can cope with that as well as any man. Now, you're going to say, ask her, what, what do the men think of it whenever she walks into the class? I hope she doesn't wear dresses like that. Bueno, ¿qué dicen los chicos en tu clase cuando vas a la universidad? Y espero que no llevas trajes así. Bueno, ellos me tratan muy normal. Espero que en mi trabajo, cuando comience a desarrollar mi trabajo, me traten como una persona normal, porque si conseguí estar, conseguí conseguir obtener mi título por estar estudiando y trabajando, preparándome para ello, entonces espero que me traten como una persona normal. Basically, they treat her like a normal person, and in her studies and by obtaining her qualifications, she's going to be just as well, as capable as they are of working in that particular profession. And I bet you she's a very good reason for all of them attending class as well. Now, as Miss Venezuela, I know she's got spe special duties. Would you please ask her to tell us what they are? Dinos algo de las cosas que haces como Miss Venezuela. Bueno, actualmente soy presidenta honoraria de una fundación en Venezuela que se encarga de la, de la, del cuidado de los niños con parálisis cerebral y eventualmente organizamos desfiles de moda con el fin de obtener beneficios para dicha institución. At the moment, she's actually honorary president of an organization in Venezuela which has A little bit, but about uh, Namibia. It's a country that's very um, sp sparsely populated. We have 1,4 million people. In a country that's so big, um, Switzerland could fit into it about 24 times. So we have a lot of open space, which is something I love very dearly. So you're a country girl? Yes. Not for you the discos of Atlanta? Well, now and again, yes. <laughs> All the little <laughs> secrets come out here. What are you going to do with your future? I would like to go into um, holistic healing, perhaps the studies of Eastern massaging techniques, 
Um, I'd like to break away from the Western massaging techniques. They're becoming very commercial, and I'd like to do something different. I think, I think that is actually gradually sinking through to Western medicine as well, isn't it? That you've got to care about the whole person. Yes, yeah? that's right. Now, what is your idea of a really good time, Michelle? <laughs> I would say going on safari in the desert in Namibia, um, sleeping under the stars, outside in your sleeping bag. That's a great thrill for you me. You want to take it with you the next time? I'd love Anytime. to go. Anytime. You're another lady who speaks lots of languages, don't you? I speak three languages. Go on, what are they? English, Afrikaans, which is a Southern African language, and German. My mum's German. Okay, well, it's very close to New Year. Let's hear Happy New Year in Afrikaans from you. Gelukkige nieuwe jaar. And a Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you, Miss Namibia. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Miss South Africa now coming up by Diana Tilden Davis. Diana, we've all had a look at your country, but as you've been touring around, what, what country fascinates you most? Well, Peter, I've done quite a lot of traveling. Um, over the past six years, I've done modeling, so that's taken me to a lot of places around the world. Um, you can't really say that, I, I can't really say that I've enjoyed one more than the other, because I think each one's different. Um, the people are different, the cultures and the, the entertainment, everything architecture, it's all wonderful. Traveling to me is the most exciting thing in the world. That's very diplomatic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like London, my hometown? Sorry? Did you like London, my hometown? Oh yes, I love London. Right, love now you, I think it's fair to say, you'd like to be an actress, or that's where you're, you're aiming your sights, yes? That's right, yes. Are you already doing some acting? Um, no, because Miss South Africa is a full-time job at the moment. That'll occup occupy me for a whole year. Um, but before that, I was on a TV series, which I had to give up for Miss South Africa. They wrote me out of the script. And hopefully, after the I'll continue acting. When, they, so when, you, when you say they wrote you out of the script, they did, didn't have an accident or...? No, I was thinking away to college, thank goodness. <laughs> so, so you, you can make a comeback, that's, that's very useful. Are you going to study acting uh, or continue your studies elsewhere? Most definitely. I've done two workshops in Los Angeles. Um, unfortunately, that, that's the extent of my training. But I would most definitely love to study in London because I'd love to get seriously into theatre. Theatre as opposed to the movies? Um, I wouldn't say that um, I like one more than the other because the only thing I've done in theatre at the moment is musicals. Um, I haven't really had a real Shakespearean role yet, but that's what I'm working towards. Okay, well, we wish you well with that. Thank you very much indeed, Miss South Africa. Thank you. Now, Miss New Zealand, uh, Lisa Marie, very unusual name, Lisa Marie de Montauk. Polish ancestry. Yes, that's, yes. A, that's a good name. You're an outdoor girl too, aren't you? Very much so. Like where, where are you from, Lisa? Because I realise obviously there's North Island and South Island. I'm actually from Taupo, which is further down the bottom of the North Island. Right. Yes. But you don't mind travelling throughout the country, obviously. Yes. <laughs> now, what have you enjoyed most about the Miss World beauty pageant? I've enjoyed... Well, of course, meeting all these lovely girls, and I feel what I've gained most out of meeting all these girls is that I've learned the true meaning of companionship. We've travelled, as everybody here knows, to England, Africa, and now Atlanta. Um, I feel that through our journey, uh, South Africa was, you know, we were quite busy there, we were all over the place. Um, very exciting time, but the hardest time on all of us. And I was amazed to see just how it brought everybody together as a team, rather than falling apart because we were tired. You know, we all just came together as one big team. I think it's opened everybody's eyes. A lot of the girls yeah. were saying about it. World peace seems to be on everybody's lips. Definitely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You've all been thinking about that? Yes. It's opened our eyes even more. More so that we've actually had the chance to go out there and experience it in real life. So you can carry the message? back to New Zealand, as come the other girls back to their countries. Most definitely, and New Zealand will see it through the eyes of us. Thank yes. you very much indeed. Our last semi-finalist is Miss New Zealand. Thank you. Okay, we've learned a little bit about the girls' little secrets, but for the moment Atlanta is a secret to me. However, Gina's going to put that right very shortly by taking me on a tour of the city for you at home. A chance to make your mind up about our semi-finalists as they will parade for you in swimwear, so don't move a muscle. We'll be right back.
you. Hello and welcome back to Miss World 1991. Okay, Gina, I'm ready for a planter. Let's go. Hold your horses, Peter. Not yet. In just a moment. But first, we're going to have the girls parade in their swimwear for the judges here in the hall and in South Africa. So let's see the girls now in their swimwear. And we start with our first semi-finalist, Miss France. This is Mareva George. She's uh, 22 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, brown hair, and those eyes, gentlemen, are green. This is Miss France. Now let's hear it for Miss Turkey. Aslahan Koryan, five feet eight inches tall. She's 19 years of age. With that lovely combination of brown hair and brown eyes. Miss Turkey. And let's hear it from Miss Jamaica. to Sandra, five feet seven with beautiful brown eyes. This is Miss Jamaica. And now Miss USA. Charlotte Ray is 25 years of age, five feet nine with big brown eyes. This is Miss USA. Let's hear it for Miss Australia. Leanne, 21 years of age, dark brown hair as you can see, and hazel green eyes, tall by the way, at 5 feet 11. This is Miss Australia. Please greet Miss India. Ritu is 20 years of age, 5 feet 7 inches tall, and brown eyes to match her dark hair. That's Miss India. Let's hear it for Miss Venezuela. Well, Nini Betlial is 20 years of age, 5 feet 11, with dark brown eyes. This is Miss Venezuela. Will you please?
please welcome Miss Namibia. Michelle McLean, 19 years of age, very tall again, standing at six feet, honey brown hair and brown eyes. This is Miss Namibia. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss South Africa. Now, Diane Tilden Davis is 22 years of age, 5 feet 10, and what you put with blonde hair, you put blue eyes. That's Miss South Africa. And the last semi finalist, Miss New Zealand. Yes, it's Lisa Marie de Montauk, usual Polish name, 21 years old, 5 feet 11, honey blonde hair, and what colour are the eyes have you got close, gentlemen, the hazel green eyes? There we are, last of our semi-finalists, Miss New Zealand. Let's have all the girls back on stage one more time to join her, please. To help you and our judges. Ladies and gentlemen, our 10 semi finalists, don't they look great? Yes? Lovely. Yes. Well, Peter, now it's your time. Tell me, are you ready to hit the town, home of Gone with the Wind? Sure am, Miss Scarlett. Well, as a southern gentleman, I hope you're paying. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Well, we'll go anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Atlanta, the capital of the New South, a city with a very historic and enchanting past, but quickly becoming one of the most modern and progressive cities in the world. In the early 1800s, the rolling tree-covered hills and the natural fording area near the fork of two rivers was an ideal site for the Native American farmers and traders who settled there or passed through. Although this year's contestants arrived in Atlanta by airplane, 100 years ago they would have come in by train. The city was originally established as a railroad terminal. In fact, the name Atlanta, derived from the feminine Atlantic, came from one of the city's first railroad companies, the Western and Atlantic. The fact that Atlanta had become an important railroad center made it a vital military target in the American Civil War, which in the early 1860s split the country between North and South. The American general, William T. Sherman, was assigned by the North to take Atlanta from the breakaway Southern Confederates. Sherman's Federal Army, on its infamous march to the sea, pushed southward and in the summer of 1864 lay siege to the city for two months. Finally, on July 22nd, the city of Atlanta was virtually burned to the ground. Only 400 of 4,500 buildings were left standing. The burning of Atlanta was dramatized in the novel Gone with the Wind, written by Atlanta native Margaret Mitchell. The book was soon made into a movie. Released in 1939, it starred Clark Gable as Rhett Butler and an unknown actress, Vivian Lee, who played the infamous Scarlett O'Hara. The book and movie, with its fictional plantation, Tara, formed an image of Atlanta that remains to this day. Buried here in Oakland Cemetery, overlooking the city whose story she made immortal, a local journalist, known as Peggy Marsh, wrote what is generally regarded as one of the greatest novels ever. Atlanta's rebirth after the Civil War was epitomized by the Cotton States and International Exposition in 1895, held here in Piedmont Park. It launched Atlanta into the 20th century. The American Civil Rights Movement of the 1950s and 60s caused much unrest in the country, 
particularly here in the South. Atlanta, however, was spared the violence which occurred in other cities because of progressive leadership in what was called the city too busy to hate. The civil rights movement had its earliest beginnings right here in Atlanta. The Nobel Peace Prize winner, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., paved the way for racial equality and great social changes. Dr. King had preached at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, located on Auburn Avenue, a street which became famous as a center of African-American business and commerce. Atlanta remains a very cosmopolitan city, as it is home to many races and nationalities. There are actually 37 peach tree streets in the city of Atlanta, but no peach trees. The word goes that earlier settlers gave directions around a local pitch tree, which in reality is a tall pine tree. So over the years, Pitch became peach. So now you have Peachtree Street. The capital of Georgia since 1867, Atlanta has a population approaching two and a half million. Many major national and international companies are located here, including the world headquarters of Coca-Cola, a company which was founded here in 1886. The Coca-Cola product has been sold around the world and is known virtually everywhere. The history of Coke is celebrated in the world of Coca-Cola, a museum located in the area of downtown known as the Underground. Atlanta is also the home to the arts, as exemplified by the dramatic High Museum of Art. Atlanta also has its own symphony orchestra, which has given concerts around the world. One aspect of the modern Atlanta is its emergence as a major telecommunication center. Atlanta is home to CNN, Cable News Network. A division of Turner Broadcasting, CNN is seen around the world in several languages. CNN was the brainchild of Ted Turner, an Atlanta businessman who built a communications empire from a billboard company. Atlanta enters the 1990s as the undisputed cultural and economic center of the southeastern United States and is an accomplished participant in national and international events. Atlanta is the proud host of the 1996 Summer Olympic Games. As you can see, construction is already underway at the new Georgia Dome. And the excitement and spirit of this city and its people continues unabated. It's a city in a hurry. So, Peter, that's a quick tour of Atlanta, Georgia, USA, from railroad crossroads to a truly international city. Atlanta, like the Phoenix, has risen from the ashes of civil war to become a true city of the future. Gina, I've really seen something of Atlanta now. Yes, I have. Yes. A bit of a history lesson. A bit of a history lesson. What I would like to say, and I'm not just saying it because I happen to be here in the town, people have really made me feel welcome, you know. Well, Peter, that's the good old-fashioned southern hospi hospitality. It certainly is. Just one question, though. I keep talking about the peach state, and I haven't had a peach. Why not? Well, to be honest, Georgia is actually known for its peanuts. I like those, too. <laughs> I don't mind. Well, coming up next, our special guest, Indecent Obsession. And our ladies parading <laughs> an evening wear. See you shortly. Thank you. Welcome back to Atlanta. Welcome back to Atlanta in the good old U.S. of A., of course, a city that is soon to host the Olympics. Well, our 79 girls started off going for gold tonight, the gold being the most coveted award in international beauty, the Miss World Crown. Now they're down to just 10 left in that race. To help you make up your mind still further, we're going to see them parade in evening wear, and Gina has the details. Our first contestant this evening is Miss France. Mareva is wearing a blue satin and sequin gown. The front is designed in the shape of a fish with muslin draping from the waist as if to represent the waves of the sea. This represents a combination of French haute couture and the French colony of Tahiti. The deep blues representing the Pacific Ocean. And that is Miss France. Next we have Miss Turkey. 
Aslahan is wearing a white stretch satin and organdy silk gown. The gold, silver, and paisley adornments are all handmade and modernized from old Turkish motifs. Turkey. Our next contestant is Miss Jamaica. Sandra is wearing an ivory and satin lace evening gown. There is a fitted bodice with a small train and a low back. All hand embroidery is done in Jamaica. for Miss Jamaica. Next we have Miss USA. Charlotte is wearing a classic champagne silk full-length evening gown. The dress is, is sleeveless with a scoops neckline front and back and edged with a large mirrored beads. for Miss USA. Next we have Miss Australia. Leanne is wearing a winter white silk taffeta gown with lace and sequin pearl overlay. It is a 1930s style sheet with free embroidered halter neck and bodice. This simple yet exotic gown has a center split with a cutaway low back. This has been elegantly beaded with pearls and teardrop pearls. Thank you, Miss Australia. Next we have Miss India. Ritu is wearing a full-length evening gown with long sleeves made from fine gold brocade and hand-sewn delicate beading, including fuchsia-colored beads. Most important, Ritu has designed all of her wardrobe for the pageant, including this lovely gown. That's Miss India. Next, Miss Venezuela. Miss Venezuela is wearing an elegant white silk strapless ball gown with intricate black beading detail on her bodice and hips. That's Miss Venezuela. And next, Miss Namibia. Michelle is wearing a black velvet strapless, full-length evening gown. The heart-shaped bust line is encrusted with diamante, as is the hemline, with the back of the dress featuring a high slit. There is a long chiffon train attached at the arms by diamante bands. Michelle's dress exemplifies top South African design. That's Miss Namibia. We have Miss South Africa. Diana is wearing a black sleeveless gown of silk and tulle. The close fitting bodice is hand sewn with silver sequins and diamante. The gown fills out from the hip into a full tulle skirt with a small train at the back. Miss 
South Africa. And our last contestant this evening, Miss New Zealand. Lisa Marie is wearing a strapless full-length gown and it's a perfect complement to the hand-gathered silk design. It is finished off with a thigh-high split in the back. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Our ten semi-finalists that are evening wear, don't they look stunning? I'd love to take them all in the town. They're great. <laughs> yes, they really are. We're going to take a breather because there's a lot of deliberating to be done with our judging panels both here and in South Africa. We've got a special guest to entertain you. Do you like rock and roll? I do. I heard these young gentlemen a while back. They are absolutely terrific. I can predict big things for them. And if you don't believe me, just wait till you hear them. They're cutting a new album at the moment. I think it's happening in L.A. The album is called Indio. You're going to feel the energy because they have an awful lot of energy. You're going to enjoy the music. And let me tell you, the other tracks on the album are terrific as well. And you're going to be hearing a lot more of them because they are really hitting the heights. The number is called Kiss Me. Let's give a real Atlanta welcome to Indecent Obsession. Here they come.
I like that. Thanks, guys. I'll tell you, they're going to drive the kids wild. And Decent Obsession, that's a new hit single, Kiss Me, and thank you for making it here. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, even at my age, I can dance to that. Okay, we're going to take a breather. You are literally minutes away from meeting the new Miss World. Back in a moment. Thank you. Welcome back to the final part of Miss World 1991. I can tell you, even as we speak, the judges both in Atlanta and in South Africa are deliberating and computing those marks to give us the five finalists. Before that, though, let's peep backstage where the girls are tensely awaiting those results. Our ten semi finalists are there. By Jove, I know how they must feel at a time like this. Thank heavens, I'm not a beauty queen. I'd make a very poor Miss World. One thing I can tell you is that at times like this, the girls really do support each other. They really do, and they're a big help. I'm no help at all, because for me and for them, it's going to be the moment of truth. Have we got the results? Yes, we have. Here's Eric Morley. Thank you, Eric. Oh, this is what we've been waiting for. Hang on. I have got the five Miss World finalists from the combined panels. Difficult choices you can imagine. Our first finalist this evening, ladies and gentlemen, in Miss World 1991 is Miss Venezuela. Yes, here she comes. Okay, second finalist, only five places of course. Second finalist is Miss Namibia. It's a long way out there, yes. Two down, three to go. Third place goes to Miss South Africa. Okay, who's going to fill the penultimate place? I'll tell you who. Miss Australia. And there's just one place to go, ladies and gentlemen. That place goes to Miss Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have the Miss World finalists for 1991. Yes, Miss Venezuela, Miss Namibia, Miss South Africa is there, Miss Australia is there too. And of course that last place went to Miss Jamaica. What a difficult decision. Right, well, one of those girls will shortly be wearing the Miss World crown, but I want you to show your appreciation for a lady who has been a marvellous Miss World, and as you have seen here tonight in Atlanta, a TV star in the making. The current Miss World, that is to say Miss World 1990, of course, is my partner in crime, Gina Tollison.
Gina, my chance to interview you for a change. Has it been a good one? I've really, truly had one of the most marvelous experiences. One where I got to tour the country and tour all countries, and I have grown more personally than I ever think I ever could um, through the benefit of this title. It's been tremendous. I think you've made quite a few friends as well, you know. Yes, I have, including you, Peter. <laughs> I've had many, I've made many friends. I'm quite nervous. I've made many friends all throughout the world. And in fact, one thing that I do ask of my successor is to please say hello to all my little children around the world because I have met so many beautiful young faces that I'll never forget. Yes, people do tend to forget that it is beauty with a purpose and you've worked very hard where that purpose is concerned, I know that. Yes, so I've traveled over 20 countries, mostly in underdeveloped countries, with Variety Clubs International. Where we have promoted the theme, Beauty with a Purpose, and I have true-heartedly believed in that theme. And it's actually, I think, might become a, the theme of my life. Let me just ask you one thing. Are you going to regret handing over that crown? Actually, Peter, a lot of people have asked me if it's sad coming to an end, but I'm looking forward to a lot of things in my life, and I know that I want to hand the excitement to another girl. You're going to have a great career. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Miss World 1990. Okay. Well, with the world awaiting the new Miss World, we're going to go live now to South Africa to get the marks from the judges there, which are already being fed into the computer, of course. South Africa, can you hear me? Please speak to me. Let's have your marks, please, if you can hear me. Our scores are as follows. Venezuela, 10. Jamaica, 9. South Africa, 8. Australia, 7. And Namibia, 7. Okay, thank you, South Africa. That's the mark straight into the computer, live from South Africa. Well, while the judges compute, of course, the two sets of marks together from the panel here in Atlanta and those marks coming in from South Africa, will you please welcome the lady who gave the whole show the theme, Beauty with a Purpose. And to that end, she travels the world extensively, making sure that it's a major success in every single country that she visits. That lady is the very special Julia Morley. I tell you, I don't know how she does it. She does a lot of work. Okay, the question is who will be Miss World 1991? The man with the answers is the man who's had the answers all these years. He is Mr. Eric Morley. I shall now announce the results in reverse order. The second runner-up, Miss South Africa. First runner-up, Miss Australia. Well, as you can see, sometimes the crowns come away. Okay, we started with 79 girls, then it was down to 10, then just five finalists. Who will be Miss World? Don't ask me, ask Eric Morley. Miss World 1991 is... Miss Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Venezuela is Miss World 1991.